Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. Today is Tuesday, October, goodness, um, October 18th. So um, we are continuing our study in Matthew 10, and what we're moving into today is really interesting. So <coughs> I'm excited to deliver it. So let's pray. Lord, we praise you and thank you that you, you keep showing us more about you. We keep understanding you better. Lord, open our minds, open our hearts. Help us remember our place in the relationship with you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are up to Matthew 10, verse 24. And this is what it says. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. <clears throat> we're going to stop and we're going to really think this through. The student cannot surpass the teacher because the teacher is teaching, is giving their expertise. And when Jesus says this, he is saying, you are not going to surpass me. You cannot surpass me. We're not perfect the way he was. We're not completely, uh, we don't go through our life with no sin the way that he, was, he did. So we have to be aware of that. We have to keep ourselves in check. Yeah, these spiritual gifts... <clears throat> are really amazing, they're awesome, they're exciting, and sometimes it does bring you attention from other people. But that attention does not belong on you. That attention needs to go to God. So when people are giving you that intention, uh, in, not intention, attention, it is important that you are constantly reminding them, this is coming from God, this is not from me, that all I am is the vessel, all I am is the servant. Verse 25, it is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. So it is enough that we are following Christ's teachings. It is enough that as we grow in our relationship with him, we're getting more and more Christ-like. That in and of itself is a miracle that we need to celebrate, that we need to be praising God for and be excited about. If the head of the house had been, has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of this household? So what does that mean? Well, if the head of the house is going to be praised, and you got to think about biblical times. The head of the household was the person that was in charge of caring for the entire family, making sure that the financial means were there, they made all the decisions for the household. They made decisions about buying property. They made decisions about selling property. It was very different from our society. Um, that head of the household would often not even consult with other people. They would, in the household, they would just do that. Additionally, that household was much, much larger. It would include cousins, aunts, uncles. It was not just mom, dad, and their two kids. It could encompass you know, um, it could encompass hundreds of people depending on the size of the household. So we need to be aware of the fact that the head of our household as part of the body of Christ is Jesus Christ. He's the head. You are not the head. You are never going to be the head. You are the servant and you have to remain that servant. So as you go into the prayer closet today, remember a few things. First of all, that spiritual gift that is so incredible and so exciting, it comes from Jesus Christ. It does not come from anyone else. The Holy Spirit has handed you that gift, and it is your job to step into that calling. However, he decides how big that gift is. He decides how small that gift is. He decides if he wants to remove it and give you a different one. It is all his discretion, and we need to be okay with that. He's the head of the household. Also, we need to remember to constantly be glorifying Christ as we serve. Do not let that glory fall on your shoulders. Be very, very mindful of that because it doesn't just keep the people around you in check. It keeps you in check. It keeps you having that servant mindset. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.